Good morning. I'm Dr. Alicia Williams and welcome to Life in Christ in the National Church. This is our Sunday school hour. We all know that we are in our summer quarter and we are studying and learning in our Sunday school hour about confident hope. And so this morning, the Lord has us studying and the title of this Sunday school lesson is Healed by Faith. We talked a little bit bit last week about um, this lesson and what this lesson um, uh, background scripture would be and what this lesson devotional reading would be. And so this morning we're here to study our Sunday school lesson, Healed by Faith. And I like to always take the time to give us a, a, a Sunday school roadmap so that we know what we're going to study, what scripture we're going to be reading, what our background scripture is, so that we um, can learn as much as we can from this Sunday School Hour. And so with that being said, before we go into our Sunday School Hour, I do want to open up with a word of prayer. And I ask that you pray with me and pray for me. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for our Sunday School Hour. We thank you for your divine provision and for your divine care. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to have your way. We thank you, Father, for this lesson. We thank you, Father, for the title of the lesson, which is Healed by Faith. We ask, Lord God, as we go into the Sunday school hour, as we read your word, as we read our Sunday school lesson, that you be with us, O oh God, and that you will go before us. Help us to see, hear, do, and become. We lift up this hour to you now, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so with that being said, let's take a look at our Sunday School Roadmap. Um, this is our lesson agenda. I call it lesson agenda, but this is kind of like our roadmap for our Sunday School Hour. It gives us um, an idea of what, uh, what we're planning to and praying to accomplish in this one hour. And so our devotional reading for this week was coming from Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 8. That passage of scripture is the most memorized and the most uh, quoted, I believe, at least one of, of the most memorized, uh, most quoted besides John 3, 16. Amen. But that proverb tells us about trusting in the Lord. And, um, and I think that devotional reading prepares us for what we're going to read about and what we're going to glean from this Sunday School lesson this morning. Our background scripture for our Sunday School lesson is coming from Matthew chapter 9, and the reference verses for Matthew chapter 9 is Mark chapter 5 and Luke chapter 8. Our lesson names for this morning is to identify common elements of the two miracles of the lesson text. Our second lesson aim is to explain the significance of the two miracles of today's text. And our third lesson aim is to distinguish circumstances when retelling of the two miracles would be appropriate or not and counseling context. And so, as always, we have our background scripture and we're encouraged to read our background scripture so that we can learn and know as much as we can about our Sunday school lesson. But our study this morning is only going to come from Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. And so I wanted to make sure that we understand that the background scriptures for our personal reading and then the scripture that we're going to study this morning is to help us glean as much as we can from our Sunday school hour and the title of our Sunday school lesson, Healed by Faith. After that, we'll go into our activity page. We'll recap to check and see if we were able to, in fact, accomplish our lesson aims. And then we'll talk real briefly about what our Sunday School Hour will be about next week. We'll have our, our weekly announcements, and then we'll go ahead and close in prayer. And so with that being said, we want to take a look at our key verse. Our key verse this morning is coming from Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. And it reads, Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. I really love this key verse because it really reinforces what our Sunday school hour is about, healed by faith. 
And so here in this key verse, it reminds us what the Lord wants us to glean from this Sunday school hour. And as always, before we go into reading our scripture, I do want to take a few seconds just to read from our Sunday school book um, so that we can kind of have uh, an understanding of the context of what we're reading this morning. And so our Sunday school book is telling us today's lesson takes place late in the second year of Jesus's public ministry. He conducted much of the early part of his ministry around the Sea of Galilee. Specifically, much of the ministry was on the north end and around the village of Capernaum. Jesus's popularity was very high. He taught about life and the kingdom of God in the rural areas and towns along the western side of the sea. His teaching was pointed, his spirit magnetic, and having already healed so many people, his reputation had spread far and wide. And uh, our Sunday school lesson says, but public opinion had begun to polarize. People watched and listened to see Jesus very closely, but for different reasons. Our Sunday school lesson reminds us not everyone adored him. Today's text occurs in a section of Matthew that contrasts Jesus' authority and power as demonstrated in miracles with the objections of religious leaders. Jesus raised their ire by forgiving sins, by associating with marginalized people, and by violating certain traditions. And so, despite the objections of the powerful, Jesus brought God's grace to bear for the blessings of God's people. I want to read that again, because I think that helps us understand where God has taken us in this lesson this morning. Our Sunday School book says, despite the objections of the powerful, Jesus brought God's grace to bear for the blessing of God's people. It says, as Jesus dealt with the crowds, he never lost sight of the individual. That's the kind of God we serve. We serve a God who deals with the crowds, but never ever lose sight of the individual. Our text today witnesses to two examples in this regard. Both circumstances involve tragically common instances of human suffering. The events considered below occurred after Jesus ended his response to a controversy over fasting. He was doing something fundamentally new in God's plan, something that required people to lay aside the old. This was no time for mourning and fasting, but instead for rejoicing because God's promised Redeemer had arrived. I want to read that again because this is another point I believe that really reinforces what the Lord is ministering to us this morning in the Sunday School Hour. This, the Sunday School book reads, was no time for mourning and fasting but instead for rejoicing because God's promised Redeemer had arrived. The deeds that followed provided a glimpse of that newness in the kingdom of God. And so this prepares us for our uh, scripture reading and it prepares us for the depth of uh, the study, the depth of the lesson that we're going to read this morning. Now we already know that our background scripture is going to be different from the scripture reading this morning and the way that the Sunday school lesson has um, our scripture reading uh, set up we're gonna do it in part so um, with that we're gonna go ahead and start with the first two verses um, we already know what our lesson aims are um, and so the first two verses are coming from Matthew chapter 9 and we're starting at verses 18 and 19. So what I like to do, um, we read uh, what the Bible is teaching us. We'll read our verses. And then after we read our verses, we'll go into our Sunday school book. And we'll see what our Sunday school book is telling us about 
these two these two verses and see what we can glean from um, our Sunday school book. And so Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 reads, While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Verse 19, Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. And so our lesson, the title of this lesson for this Sunday School Hour is Healed by Faith. And so here in this verse, we see that the synagogue leader came and he knelt before Jesus and he told Jesus that his daughter had died. And, and, and he had faith. First to come to Jesus as the synagogue leader. And second, to share that his daughter had just died. And then third, to believe that if Jesus would come and put his hands on her, she would live. And, and so we see here that Jesus responded. And so our Sunday school lesson is telling us specifically about verses 18, that a certain interjection, not translated here, but translated as behold in other uh, Bible translations, draws the reader's attention to what happens next. The leader who approached Jesus held a prominent position in the local Jewish community in that he oversaw the day-to-day -day operations of the synagogue. This man's title suggests that he was respected and mature in his faith in God. Though Matthew did not name the leader, we'll come to understand as we read more of God's word that the Gospel of Luke identified him as Jairus. And you can read about that in Luke chapter 8. The leader honored Jesus by talk, excuse me, the leader honored Jesus by taking the position of, the, of a supplicant approaching his king. This act indicates great respect for someone of honor or power. Either way, it is a humble posture. The leader might not have realized Jesus' divine identity, but like many others, he did recognize Jesus as a man of exceptional authority and probably at least considered him to be a great prophet. And so when we read verse 18 and we see in verse 18 that this synagogue leader knelt before Jesus. Um, and, and, and our Sunday school lesson is reminding us that this is a humble posture. Our Sunday school uh, lesson is reminding us that he, he may not have recognized Jesus as the son of God, but he did recognize Jesus as a man of exceptional authority. And so we, we come to appreciate what our Sunday school lesson is uh, revealing to us and allowing us to see deeper into what is transpiring in our scripture reading. Let's continue on and see what the Sunday school book says. It reads specifically about uh, verse 18. It must have wrenched the leader's heart to announce that his daughter had just died. Again, Luke gives more detail. She was 12 years old. But the man did not ask Jesus to join him in mourning. Rather, this father made the statement of remarkable faith that we see here. He sought of the reversal of his loss, the restoration of his daughter to life. That's impressive. How did the man come to believe Jesus was capable of miracles, including raising the dead? Certainly, he must have heard of Jesus healing miracles. Perhaps he had witnessed one. But to this point in Matthew's gospel, Jesus had not raised someone from death. Still, the story of Elijah raising the widow's son serves as precedent for a prophet being able to raise the dead. The leader surely knew the account. The connection is strengthened by the fact that when the crowds misidentified Christ, they sometimes believed him to be Elijah. In any case, the father's hope was that Jesus was able to bring the dead back to life. 
And so that helps us see, and it really, really um, amplifies the title of our Sunday School lesson, Healed by Faith. It really amplifies. Here's a, a synagogue leader. He wasn't even a disciple, but somehow he had faith enough to believe. He had faith enough to come to Jesus and to share with Jesus that his daughter had just died. He had faith enough to, 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 to even confess that if Jesus put his hands on her, she would live. And I thank God this morning for this lesson. I thank him for allowing us to take time to read and to get this insight and as glean as much as we can from this Sunday school hour. And so the Sunday school lesson shares with us specific, specifically about verse 19. Probably some of the leader's friends were certain that Jesus would not go with him. But the great physician, Jesus, makes house calls. And as usual, his disciples followed. And that's what we see here in these two verses. I think this is a great start for us this morning as we continue to learn um, about the Sunday School lesson, tie, uh, which is titled um, Healed by Faith. This is an excellent example of, of the magnitude of faith that existed in the first century church. This is, this is the magnitude of, of what the need was and, and what the reach was for uh, a, 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 um, a miraculous uh, healing from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so that takes us into our next set of verses, Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 reads, Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him, and touched the edge of his cloak. Verse 21, she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Verse 22, Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. Again, this is another amazing account of how God ministers to our need. Here in this these verses, it's telling us that, and even it reinforces again, this is a, another excellent um, inspiration and insight uh, as it pertains to the title of the Sunday School lesson, Healed by Faith. Here we're reading, and this is a very familiar uh, passage. We, we've heard about the woman with the issue of blood. We know that she was uh, uh, sick and, and bleeding for 12 long years, and we know that she touched the edge of his cloak. And we, we're learning here this morning that she didn't say it out loud. The verse here in verse 21 is telling us she said it within herself. If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. So her faith, I believe, motivated her to reach. She probably didn't have strength. People probably was looking at her sideways. But something in her caused her to believe. Something in her caused her faith to rise up and reach for his cloak to be healed. And in that instance, this verse is telling us that Jesus turned and saw her and said to her, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. This is indeed definitely a reinforcement of the title of our lesson, Healed by Faith. And so let's take a look. Let's see what our Sunday School book shares with us about these verses. The Sunday School book says the translation just then alerts the reader that a new piece of narrative is interrupting. The second account of an unnamed woman begins here. This method of telling the two stories builds tension in the first, as we wait to see what will happen with the leader and his daughter. It is also inviting the reader to feel the aspiration that the leader and the disciples might feel at being stalled on their important errand. Will the girl live or not? We must read on to find out. I want to take just a second because there's some really good insight here in our Sunday School book. But 
This is talking about healed by faith. Our, our Sunday school lesson is teaching us about healed by faith. But at the same time, it's telling us about these accounts. But this is also ministering to us in our life in this instance, in this moment today. And being able to recognize um, that we have to read on to find out. We're not only reading on to find out what happened in this instance, but what will happen and what does happen on our behalf right now and today. And, and what happens in our relationship today with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So be encouraged in the Lord. That's all I wanted to say. So the Sunday school book reads, the woman's bleeding was what we would call hemorrhaging. This was probably from constant menstruation a debilitating physical condition, the woman's body would have needed to replace lost blood constantly for 12 years. The same amount of time the leader's daughter had been alive. And you read that in Luke 8 verse 42. All her energy would go to the vital need, leaving her weak and vulnerable to other sickness. Furthermore, she had spent all she had going to physicians who only made her condition worse. There had not been any specialist in 12 years who could treat her properly. This illness also made her life intolerable and in being a social outcast. According to the law of Moses, any flow of blood made a woman ceremonially unclean. This law was meant to illustrate to the entire nation of Israel the need all people have for God's repeated cleansing. But in application, it meant that the unclean woman could have no social contact with anyone except another woman who was currently ministrating. The clean became unclean by contrast with the unclean. For this woman, the law of Moses was a curse. The edge of his cloak may refer to one of the tassels of the law of Moses is specified for the garments of the Israelites. Being ritually unclean, the woman could not approach Jesus directly. Thus, she attempted to slip in unnoticed. Even so, she risked putting many into unknown states of being unclean when they brushed against her in the crowd. The woman did not give in to the despair. Though contact with the unclean normally contaminated the clean person, the woman believed that the reverse would happen. She, like the girl's father, apparently believed that Jesus' power demonstrated and other miracles could meet her need as well. Just the slightest touch would be enough for great healing. What a powerful level of faith. Um, and desperation. Um, the word translated be healed is translated be saved in other contexts. Though we usually think of saving and salvation in spiritual terms, the word could indicate physical healing. Political release, a typical reason for Roman emperors to refer to themselves as saviors and other forms of liberation depending on context. Understanding the many uses of this word points us to the way that Jesus intends to save us. Though we will have everlasting life with him, we can also experience now the kinds of renewals that women desire. She wanted an end to her physical suffering. She wanted an end to her years of social out ostracism. She needed help that wouldn't cost her money. She didn't have. We too can experience healing and community in Christ. Realizing that she had nowhere else to turn, the woman put her trust in the one whose power could make her well. In her weakness, she reached out to Jesus, believing that a mere touch would be enough. That's what the Sunday School book shares with us specifically about verse 20 and about verse 21. Let's see what the Sunday School lesson shares with us specifically about verse 22. 
the Sunday School book reads, Jesus possessed not only divine power to work miracles, but divine knowledge as well. He recognized the touch, even though it was slight and he was in a crowd. He realized that this slight touch signified something of great significance. This proves that the woman's healing was not some kind of psychosomatic reaction. There was something more here than a woman having believed so strongly that she was going to be healed, that she actually willed herself to be well. That possibility could not be true because Jesus felt the power go out from him. Her faith made the healing possible, but the healing power came from outside her. Seeing the woman, Jesus addressed her with respect and kindness. Daughter, a term of endearment, also indicates her need for help and Jesus acting on her behalf like a good father. Another tie to the story of the leader, which has been paused. Jesus' encouragement, take heart, reassured the woman that she had done nothing wrong and had no reason to fear Jesus' reaction. The other Gospels make clear that the woman was indeed afraid. The account comes to its climax as Jesus says, your faith has healed you. This is precisely what the woman hoped for. The law of Moses had separated the woman from society, but the one for whom the law prepared the faithful of Israel to expect had given her new life. Some conclude from Jesus' words that if a person needs God's miraculous help and does not receive it, then that person does not have enough faith. That is not at all the meaning of Jesus' statement. Jesus commends and celebrates the faithful who seek what he alone can give. When he says words such as, your faith has healed you, he also acts on their behalf. Effective faith believes that what God supplies will meet the real need regardless of whether or not a miracle is involved. Thus, Prayers are not necessarily answered to the Father. Excuse me. Thus, prayers are not necessarily answered on terms we expect. Even Jesus' own prayer to the Father in Luke 22 was not answered on the terms Jesus wanted. Yet, he committed himself to the Father's will. And we'll continue reading. Confident that the Father would be faithful. As important as the greatness of our faith is, the greatness of the Lord's faithfulness is more so. And just a caveat, this morning is um, actually Father's Day. And for us to be reading uh, this Sunday School lesson about healed by faith, and for us to be reading how Jesus is a good Father and how um, fathers move on behalf of their children, on behalf of their loved ones. We can appreciate that and honor that um, as a reminder of why fathers are so important and why we should celebrate fathers on this Father's Day. And I um, just wanted to say that I, I meant to uh, start off with that this morning, but um, this just reminded me of how special this day is and how special fathers are to us. And so it takes us to verse um, 23 through 26. We're going to go ahead and continue with our, our uh, scripture reading. And we're reading in Matthew chapter 29, verses 23 through 26. And these are our last set of verses. And so we know that uh, we didn't read our entire background scripture. We read um, these specific, specific verses um, so that we can um, glean from the title of our Sunday School lesson, Healed by Faith. And so Matthew chapter 9, verse 23 reads, When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, verse 24, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. 
Verse 25, after the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. Verse 26, news of this spread through all that region. I love how the Lord um, ministers through his word, level by level and layer by layer. And it, it makes it easy for us to grasp. It makes it easy for us to not miss what the Lord is ministering to us uh, specific in his word. And so here we see that Jesus did, in fact, go to the synagogue's leader's house. And Jesus did, in fact, um, respond to the crowds that were, um, in my opinion, in the wrong place. They weren't with Jesus. They were in mourning. And, and, and Jesus didn't make a big deal uh, of, of, of resurrecting uh, the 12-year-old girl uh, that was asleep. The scripture just tells us that uh, he just took her by the hand and, and she got up. And, and, and Jesus declared before he took the young girl by the hand uh, for the, 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 the people in the crowds playing pipes to go away. And he, he declared the girl is not dead but asleep. And, and the crowds and the people laughed at him. But God is still God. God is still God. Regardless if our faith is small, if our faith is weak, if we're sick, if we're, we're, we're a synagogue leader, God is still God. And so let's take a look what our Sunday school book reads and shares with us about these verses. Having successfully resolved the issue of the woman's bleeding, Jesus continues on his way to the synagogue leader's house. Jesus had not forgotten the need that was there. Mourning in ancient Israel was not quiet. Minstrels like played to mourn, played their instruments. Family and neighbors would gather to support and show uh, um, their mourning. The crowd expressed sorrow with uh, much noise in order to demonstrate just how loved the deceased person was. Jesus telling the crowd of mourners to go away is a command to withdraw, as the word is also translated in Mark chapter 3. But here, Jesus was not uh, asking merely for quiet in order to concentrate. Rather, the fact that the girl is not dead but asleep meant that there was no reason to continue mourning. By this statement, Jesus was not implying that the girl was in a deep coma uh, that had been mistaken for death, nor did he mean that, the, that she actually was sleeping naturally. He meant that she would not remain dead. Later, Jesus would speak uh, similarly at the death of Lazarus in John chapter 11, a declaration that the disciples misunderstood. Jesus remarks he served the mourners. They knew death when they saw it. All of their own lives told them that there was no logical reasoning behind Jesus' statement. Thus, their laughter was one of derision. Unlike the girl's father, these mourners held out no thought that Jesus could do anything to reverse the state of death. Verse 25, um, Matthew described the miracle in terms that matches Jesus' declaration that the girl was asleep. Like a parent might take a sleeping child's hand to awaken her, so Jesus woke the girl from death. Her resurrection came as a simple touch from Jesus, like the healing of the sick woman. Though most of the crowd were not with Jesus in the room, they surely saw the girl was alive again. <laughs> I love the Lord and I, I thank God for how he moves on our behalf. And I thank God that he doesn't see as we see, that he doesn't move as we move, but he moves on a greater level all the time in ways that we'll never understand. But I thank God for it. And so 
our last verse, the Sunday School book says, This great miracle, the results of which were seen by many, could not be kept quiet. The spread of this news surely contributed to the crowds that followed Jesus or came out to meet him when he came near their areas. Their numbers made it clear that the people needed more attention than Jesus alone could give them. So he sent his disciples out to declare the coming of the kingdom of heaven. That initial missionary commission was a prelude to the commission Jesus gave to his followers after his resurrection, a commission that we share today to make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. And so we see here this morning in our scripture reading, the essence of healed by faith. We see in the account of the woman with the issue of blood. We see here in the account of the synagogue leader's daughter that their faith in the impossible, their faith in what has never uh, been done before to be made manifest for them, for their faith, for their reach, for their effort, for their belief. And God responded. And because of that, we bear witness today through and in and by God's word of their testament, of their experience with God, that God is a healer. God does resurrect from the dead. And so we thank God for that. I do want to take a few minutes to read what our Sunday School book shares with us um, in its conclusion. And then the prayer. I normally don't read um, our Sunday School prayers um, um, because I feel like we, we, as we study the lesson, I feel like the Lord um, encourages us to pray our own prayer. And so, um, and, and so uh, but this morning, I just want to take a minute to, to, to read that for us. And so, our Sunday School book says, Matthew introduced the interaction between Jesus and the synagogue, but then interrupted it with a second encounter before returning to the first story to wrap it up. The parallel account is found in Matthew, Mark 5 and Luke 8, which was our background scripture. By this arrangement, we know related themes in the two accounts. The themes are that of one, a 12-year-old girl who had not yet attained womanhood when she died, and two, a woman from whom womanhood had become the source of suffering for as many years as the girl had lived. Perhaps you see in yourself characteristics of the people in these two accounts. Perhaps you are like a family member of the dead girl, mourning the loss of someone you love. Perhaps you are like the sick woman suffering with a chronic condition that does not improve. Certainly, we all know that grief and suffering will come for us, even if we presently enjoy a moment of calm. The miraculous power of Jesus does not assure us that we will have no loss or pain, but our text tells us what we can do in the midst of suffering and loss. We can put our trust in the Lord. And that was a part of our devotional reading in, in, Psalm, in, in Proverbs 3. Our, our ultimate destiny is a life in which the Lord wipes away our tears. Even if our pain lasts for years, the Lord will heal it when he raises us with all his people to live with him forever. Even when death separates us from those we love, even when we face that separation in our own death, the Lord will unite his people when he returns. We sometimes refer to Jesus as the great physician, but he is more than a great medical doctor who knows how to treat and cure diseases. This is power and authority in Jesus power that eradicates not only disease but also death i want to read that again because this morning we talked about the title of our lesson which is healed by faith but the magnitude of, of what 
the Lord is ministering to us in this Sunday school hour is just that. There was power and authority in Jesus that eradicates not only disease, but also death. And we can honor and glorify and thank God about that this morning. The Sunday school lesson says there is the power and authority in the resurrected life in Jesus. Power and authority for life both now and in eternity. It's a perfect way to um, end our Sunday school hour and our Sunday school reading and our Sunday school lesson. And I want to take a few minutes to, to read this prayer. This is a really special prayer. And even our lesson, Healed by Faith, it's a very special lesson for us this morning on this Father's Day sun, um, Sunday. And so the, the prayer in our Sunday school book reads, Almighty God, we cry out to you in our suffering and our grief. We long for the life that you have in store for us. As we do, we recognize the abundance that we now possess through Jesus, even abundance unto eternal life. We thank you for this, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. I love that. I love that. I love to be able to take a moment in prayer, to take a moment in reading God's word, and to take a moment in studying from our Sunday school book what the Lord is ministering to us in this Sunday school hour about healed by faith so that our faith is, is, is strengthened, so that our faith is, 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 is uh, maturing and growing. Not just because of what we read in, in God's word, but because the full manifestation of God in our life, in our struggles, in our, our circumstances. God is a healer. And the resurrection power and authority of Jesus Christ is still made manifest on today. And I thank God for that. I've, I've seen it firsthand myself. Um, and and. It's, it's, it's a miraculous feat. It's a miraculous act. But the most important thing is, is what God's desire and design is at that moment. And, and the most important thing is walking in faith and having that, that closeness and that time with the Lord. It's something that um, you never forget. And so we thank God for this lesson. It's real. And... Um, it's for us as, as baptized Christian believers. And so that takes us to our photos. You all know that I always like to have some photos. And so this morning, we were talking about two specific miraculous accounts. I took this depiction of Jesus because of, uh, and, and, and I believe we all know that that photo comes from um, uh, the the uh, Jesus story, um, uh, um, which is a powerful, powerful um, um, depiction of, of Jesus' ministry and life here on earth. And so that's a picture of Jesus that I took from, from, from the, the, the movie. Um, and then up at the top, you'll see, I captured a depiction of the woman with the issue of blood who is... Uh, touching Jesus's garments with in the midst of the crowd. And then the other depiction is the synagogue's leader's daughter. And here, uh, um, it's Jesus taking a young girl, the 12 year old girl by the hand, and she is healed. I'd like to take some time to see visual depictions. We, we read about it and, and we have a depiction in our mind's eye. And then um, this helps to reinforce when we have a visual picture of what it could have uh, looked like. And we have a depiction of, of what uh, we read in God's word. And so I pray that these photos blessed you and encouraged you. Um, and um, just reinforce what the Lord ministered to us this morning in our lesson. So that takes us to our activity page. We are in our summer quarter. We're in lesson four. Three. And um, this lesson is coming from Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. And for the sake of time, I'm going to go straight into the answers. 
And so here, um, this uh, activity page, part one, says healed by faith. Jesus in context. The instruction says, understand the context for today's study by examining the verses that precede the lesson text. And so I thought this was really exciting, really um, in, in doing this. And of course, your answers are going to be different. But in doing this, this helped us to get um, a more intimate view and experience of who Jesus is. And so Matthew chapter 9, verses 2 through 8, what Jesus did, he healed. Why others objected, um, they, they accused him of blasphemy. And then um, how Jesus responded, Jesus knew their thoughts. He asked the questions and he taught them. And so that was Matthew chapter 9, verses 2 through 8. Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. What did Jesus do? Jesus dined with the sinner. He, he dined with Matthew, the, the tax collector. What others, why did the others object? They, they ridiculed Jesus uh, for dining with the sinner because he was they objected because Jesus was dining with the sinner and then how did Jesus respond Jesus taught them he told them to go to the word and learn about uh, the scriptures and how to properly behave and how to properly respond and then verse uh, 14 through 17 what did Jesus do um, Jesus' disciples did not fast while he was with them here on earth. That's what Jesus did. He didn't um, make his disciples fast. Why did others object? Others objected because John's disciples fasted and because church fasted. And so they felt like Jesus wasn't keeping to tradition or following the um, protocol. What did Jesus do? Jesus taught about who he was. He taught about um, the time and the season that they were in. And so that gives us a glimpse um, of Jesus in context as it pertains to chapter Matthew chapter 9 and the different uh, accounts that transpired uh, during the uh, uh, that uh, chapter and and before we started to read in um, our, our uh, study this morning and so our second instruction here on part one says in the space below summarize your discoveries with one sentence to answer this question how did the actions of Jesus clarify his mission more fully one sentence is, Jesus came to save the lost, so he taught. Because of their ignorance, because they were not aware of who he was and his mission and his assignment, he did what he came to do, and while he was doing what he came to do, he taught them to be better and to do better. So that takes us to part two of our activity page, Reactions to Healing. And the instructions read, write what you imagine one person listed below have recorded in a personal journal after the incident in which they were involved. The journal entry can be bullet points or whole sentences. So the first one, the synagogue leader. What would his personal journal uh, sentence or, or, or bullet point or would be? And for, of course, um, for each of us, our sentence or, or our bullet point will be different. And so I encourage you to take some time to capture your own personal um, uh, uh, entry. And the synagogue leader, I wrote, merciful, gracious God healed my daughter today. Very simple, very straight, forward to the point. The woman with the issue of blood her bullet point or her whole sense will be merciful. Gracious God healed my body today. And then uh, one of Jesus' disciples 
Their response will be, merciful, gracious God allowed me to bear witness of the miracle signs and wonders. And someone in the crowd at the house, crowd bystander would say, I know the child was dead, but by some miracle, some act of God, the child now is alive. And so that takes care of our activity page, part one and part two. I pray that this uh, activity really blessed you um, and, and just stretched you in a way um, as it pertains specifically to our lesson study this morning. So we are at our recap. We did identify common elements of the two miracles of the lesson text. We did explain the significance of the two miracles of today's text. And we did distinguish circumstances when we're telling the two miracles would be appropriate or not in counseling context. And that helps us to understand that our Sunday school title was healed by faith. The healing was important, but the faith, having the faith in Jesus, the faith to believe the impossible, the faith to believe in impossible situations is most important. And so, it takes us to what we're going to be studying next week. The title of our Sunday School lesson next week is Rescued from Doubt. We know during this summer quarter, we studied about worry. We studied about fear. This morning, the Lord allowed us to study about uh, uh, faith uh, and, and, and about healing. And so next week, we're shifting and we're studying in our Sunday School hour next week about rescue from doubt. And so our devotional reading for this week is coming from Isaiah chapter 38, verses 16 through 20. The background scripture for our Sunday School Hour next week is coming from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Our key verse next week for our Sunday School Hour is coming from Matthew 14, 31, and it reads immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And so that gives us some insight what our Sunday School lesson is going to be about next week. Sounds like this is going to be really exciting and um, it'll help us learn more about uh, being rescued from doubt. With that being said, I want to take a few moments to share about our announcements. Of course, every Thursday evening at 730, we have our midweek Bible study. This month, the month of June, we'll be concluding our study. We've been studying all month long about salvation. And so I thank God for that. This, this Thursday, um, we'll be studying about the purpose of salvation. I think it's going to be exciting and, and, and insightful. And then um, next month, our midweek or uh, uh, end of month worship is going to be on Sunday, July 18th at 11:30 a.m. And of course, today we know that we have our end of month worship directly after the Sunday school hour. Our end of month worship starts at 11:30, so I encourage you um, to to stick around. I encourage you to stay online. We're going into our end of month worship Zoom channel, and I want to encourage you to be there with us as we finish out. Uh, this day of worship. With that being said, that takes us to our closing prayer. If all minds and hearts are clear, let us close out with a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for our Sunday school hour. We thank you for the study of your word. We thank you, Father, for healed by faith. We thank you for the physical accounts, the physical testimonies that we were able to read, that we were able to glean from this morning in the Sunday school hour. Father, we are preparing to go into our next service, our end of month worship. We ask, Father, that you would be with us. We ask, Father, that you would go before us. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love and kindness and your tender mercies that are poured out upon us, afresh and anew every morning. You will, dear God, continue to get the glory. You will, dear God, continue to get the honor and the praise. And Father, we just honor you. We thank you now in all things in Jesus' name. I pray, amen, amen. We'll see you in just a bit. We're going straight into our 11th. 30 service. Thanks again and God bless.